Hi everybody, so starting in a different position today as uh, we're going to look at the spine and we're going to look at ways of maintaining the health of your spine, mobilizing through it and a couple of little strength moves for it as well. So I'm always recommending things that you might do every day. <laughs> so the one thing that I think you should do every day or that I do myself every day, so the minute I hop out of bed, I think about my back, the most important you know, sort of structure in your body, of course, is your spine, uh, because everything else, your arms and legs are attached to that. So you need a good, strong, healthy spine uh, to maintain um, every other part of your body as well. So the thing I do every morning when I hop out of bed, I do these things called, what we call Jefferson curls, okay? So you stand uh, feet about hip width apart, and you tuck your chin to your chest, you let your shoulders fall forward, and you've let your head fall down and then you slowly roll back up and you take your shoulders back and that's one round of it and I would do maybe up to 10 of them in the morning now when you start your legs feel stiff everything feels tight but the more you do it the better it gets so you start off your day with the spine ready for work let's say ready for the huge amount of work it has to do every day so think about Feet hip width apart, let's do it a couple of more times. Now the thing about um, your legs in this position, if your hamstrings are tight, I would recommend that you bend your knees quite deeply. You can bend them as deep as you like. Uh, and then as the hamstrings get looser, as you proceed with it, you can then uh, straighten your knees out entirely. So to begin then, tuck your chin to your chest, let your shoulders fall in. And you can feel as you go down, your tummy is tightening. And then when you get down, just let your body hang. I have a little bend in my knees here and then I'm going to roll myself back up and then roll my shoulders up back and down. I'm going to do it again just to show you how. Tuck your chin to your chest, let your shoulders collapse in and then start to roll. Rolling your body all the way down and then very slowly, little bend in your knees, rolling yourself all the way back up and then taking your shoulders up, back and down. And as I say, I would do maybe 10 of those every single morning, first thing out of bed um, when your body is warm and just it becomes just part of your daily routine, part of what you do. Maybe do, do it just before you get into the shower uh, and just before you get really busy through your day. So things that you want to do every day are best done when you, you're not totally preoccupied with everything else that's going on. And I think that's a really good way to start your day. We're going to come down then onto all fours and we're going to uh, do what we, we call in yoga cat-cow. Really simple pose. So um, when we were doing our hips, we, did a, a, we got into this position before. So my fingers are spread and when I look down at them, they look like kind of like starfish. Um, and my elbows wrists and shoulders in line, my knees are hip width apart. And as I inhale, I'm going to take my head and what we call my sit bones up and my bellies to the mat. As I exhale, I took my tailbone under, took my chin to my chest, and I push my, my upper back up. As I inhale, I lift up. And it's good to use your breath. As I exhale, I round. When I inhale, I lift up. And when I exhale, I round. And one more time, inhale to lift up. And as I exhale, I round. And then I'm just going to come back to cent what we call center. So when we're doing back bending, a good thing to do before uh, we get into the, the um, sort of slightly more challenging moves is to warm up our shoulders as well. So an easy way to warm up your shoulders is just to lift your right arm up and then thread your right arm in onto your left. So my palm is facing up, my right shoulder's on the mat, and the, I have the right side of my head on the mat. As I inhale, I lift up again, and then I just thread my hand through again, and then I take my right hand to the mat, and I do the same on the other side. So inhale to lift up my left hand, exhale, so I'm going to thread through, inhale to lift up, and then on your exhale, you're going to thread through. And one more time, inhale to lift up. And then on your exhale, you're going to thread through. 
and then come all the way back. And I'm going to take you into um, a stretch for your spine, a really safe uh, stretch for your spine. So you're going to take your glute muscles back to your heels. So that's the first part of it. I want you to push into your hands until you're actually sitting on your heels. And then if you can take your, your forehead down, absolutely do. But if that's not in, uh, if you can't do that right away, so maybe put, you know, a bolster under your forehead and let's support it there. Or a really simple way of doing it is make two fists. Stack one on top of the other and rest your forehead on your fists. So it, the one thing not to do is to um, sort of take your head down and leave your bottom up because that's, not, that's actually not stretching anything. Uh, so you want to have, this is the part of the stretch you really need. So your bottom on your heels and then you're reaching forward. And this is a really, really good back stretch. So stretching out your back. And then when we come up, we're going to swing around and you're going to come to lie down on your mat again. As always with me, boringly consistent, you're going to use your uh, core to take you down. So tuck your chin to your chest and roll your body all the way back down. When you get down to your mat, I want you to bend your knees. So your feet are about hip width apart and they're kind of stacked underneath your knees. And when you take your fingers down, they should just about touch your heels. So fingertips to your heels. You're going to leave your palms on the mat and your head on the mat. And this is, this is a really good move for your back. So you're going to begin it, but it needs to be taken slowly and methodically. So you push your feet into the mat, then you start to curl your tailbone. Then you press your lower back into the mat and then you start to peel your spine up off the mat until you get right up. And the, we call this bridge pose. The second version of bridge pose then, we're in the same setup. Your feet are hip width apart, your knees are bent. And when you stretch your fingertips down, they can just about touch your heels. Palms, you're on your mat to start. So you're gonna push into your feet, curl your tailbone, press that lower back into the mat, and then peel your spine all the way up. I want you to press into your feet first and really engage through your glute muscles so we get some work on them. And now this time you have the option of interlacing your fingers under your back and then walking your shoulders in. So when you walk your shoulders in like this, you're getting that lovely stretch through the front of your upper chest, but you're also getting a lovely bend in your back. So you can press into your feet, press into your clasped hands, and you're still squeezing your glute muscles. You're still feeling the strength in your body. And then to release it, you let go of your fingers and then you lower down as slowly as you can make it. Really, really slow. And then when you're all the way down, let your body relax, completely relax. Now the next one, a little more challenging. So we're going to need a little bit of space. Oh, I was wondering what was behind my head. It's the block. Okay, so we're going to roll up and down your mat. So you're going to hold it on behind your thighs. Now, I want you to think as you do this that you're not, you know, that your back isn't flat at any one stage, that you're actually rounding all of the time. So you need to switch on your tummy to do this and try and use your tummy to uh, make the move as opposed to using momentum. Because if we start speeding this up, then you lose all the benefits of it. So you're going to hold it on behind your thighs and then you're going to rock yourself forward. If you need to put your feet to the mat to start with, absolutely do. Then tuck your chin to your chest and roll back and then roll up and, whoops, and roll back. I didn't realize the tape was there. Take it out. And then you're going to roll back and roll yourself back up. And that simple little thing, just like the Jefferson curl we did at the very beginning, is really good. So it gets you really moving. Now we're going to switch right over and you're going to lie on your tummy. And we have a sequence of little moves here. So this one, so you, uh, we call this uh, baby cobra. So my fingers are spread on the mat, my palms are on the mat, my elbows are right underneath my shoulders and my feet are about hip width apart and the tops of my feet are on the mat. Now I'm going to lift my kneecaps off the mat and then I'm going to tuck my tummy in by just 
tucking my tailbone under and I'm going to take my shoulders back. Now don't stare straight ahead. You should be looking just, to, just beyond your fingers. And this is a back bend. Really nice back bend. So it's lower back bending here. And then you can release that. You can make a little pillow out of your hands. You can rest your cheek on your hands, bend your knees and rock your feet side to side. And that releases your lower back. Now you can follow me through the rest of these poses at, uh, as we progress with the back bending. But if they, if they feel a little too much for you, then just come back to this particular pose. This is enough, it's plenty, particularly if you lift the kneecaps, engage the core and take your shoulders back. But if you want to take it a little further and your back feels fine, then take your hands to where your elbows were and you're going to press into your hands and lift yourself up. Now, don't let your elbows come out to the side. Tuck your elbows in and keep a little bend in them because if you straighten your elbows, then your shoulders come up and we absolutely don't want that. So you're taking your shoulders back, elbows tucked in and a little bend. So if you're up in this position with me, then you can feel that your glutes are working here too. They're switched on, they come on automatically. And this is a back bend too. And then on your exhale, you're gonna slowly, slowly lower down. Make a pillow out of your hands again, bend your knees, and rock your feet from side to side. From here, so those, I, if when I'm doing them myself, I would repeat two or three times. I would repeat the baby one, I would repeat the full one, and then I would uh, do a little more. So I would take my left hand, my left elbow under my left shoulder, bend my right knee, and then I would hold on to the front of my right foot. So I'm opening my right shoulder, but I'm also stretching here, uh, the front of my right thigh. And then I'm going to release that down. And then I'm going to always stack my elbow under my shoulder. I don't want my elbow out there. I'm putting pressure on the shoulder joint. I want the elbow tucked in. I want to bend the left knee. And then I want to push my left uh, heel towards my left glute muscle. And just let that stretch. And of course, as always, it's, that's a prep for another pose. So I'm going to take you into bow pose next, which is a back bend, but it's also a shoulder opener and stretch, a stretch for your chest and a stretch for your hip flexors, which we looked at before. So you're going to bend both knees. You're going to stretch your hands back, hold on to the top of your feet, and you're just going to lift up. You don't need to come too far. Um, you can press your feet away and... So push back with your feet and pull, pull forward with your hands. And we're in bow pose. And I would usually hold this maybe for, you know, four or five seconds, not too much. And then release it. And then again, always releasing, make a pillow out of your arms, rest your cheek on your hands and rock your feet from side to side. And then we've one more to do. And this one is about back strengthening. How do we build strength through our back? Or it's not actually, it, you know that, it's not in the bones themselves, it's the muscles and the tendons and ligaments that support them that you're strengthening. Uh, because the spine of its own accord can bend and everything, but it, it won't bend without muscles <laughs> and the other structures. It's simply a structure uh, without power of its own. So for the next one then, I want to take your arms behind you, palms facing up, and I want to lift your chest up and maybe lift your feet up. So you should feel that in your back. So the only thing that's holding you up there are the muscles that run up and down your spine. Well, run up your spine. Uh, the erector spinae. Your glutes are working too here. So if you put your hands, if you give your glutes a, a touch, you can feel that they're switched on. And then release that down. And now always after that, I would press my palms into the mat and come back into that child's pose that we did earlier. Pressing my sit bones back to my heels, resting my forehead either on the mat or on my fists, and letting my back stretch. And I would hold this for, I'm only holding it for a couple of seconds. You could hold this for a couple of minutes, actually, just stretching. Um, and from here, I'm just going to swing myself around and come to sit. So you could do so many more things for your back, but of all the ones that I know, uh, they work the best and they're easily done. Well, particularly the Jefferson curls early in the morning, I think they're invaluable. 
um, as a way of mobilizing through the, the spine and keeping strength through the spine. And one last thing, seeing as I'm sitting here on that mat, simplest thing ever that you can do, say you're just sitting down, you're at work and you're sitting in a chair or you're sitting anywhere, just stretch your arms up and just lift the hands up. So my arms are up by my ears, my palms are facing each other and I'm just lengthening through my back. So think about the, your rib cage coming away from your pelvis. So think about that area there and you're lengthening, lengthening, lengthening. And then you can drop your hands down. And this is where our pull-up bar comes into the conversation. Again, I'm never going to let you forget it. So the pull-up bar that you can hang out of. So if you want to traction your spine or if you want to have a really healthy spine, every time you pass your pull-up bar, you can just hang out of it and let your spine stretch. Um, one of my sons bought himself this version, um, adjust or accessory for the pull-up bar to uh, boots that he could strap himself into and hang upside down. Uh, I don't like it myself uh, particularly, but he swears by it. He's 6'3 and is always trying to uh, take care of his spine. But I see him regularly hanging upside down uh, in, the, in that boot thing. Anyway, that's not for me and maybe it might not be for you too, but it's something to think about. But your pull-up bar uh, is going to be invaluable for, for your back. For the health of your spine uh, and you can do all kinds of other things with it as well. Anyway to finish off I want you to as much as possible try to incorporate some of this into the way you take care of yourself on a daily basis. The things that you can build in to a into a regular routine are the ones that you really need rather than spending you know you know an hour and a half in the gym once or twice a week if you do stuff on a regular basis, it's, that's what's going to make the difference. That's really, from, from my experience, that's what makes the difference. It's consistency and stuff that fits in uh, with your lifestyle, that doesn't become a chore or a bore, um, and that, that, you, that you feel better after. Uh, that's the one thing I can say about these, this uh, stuff I've been doing with you. It's de they're designed to make you feel better and function better. Um, and sleep better, like all of that. Uh, anyway, enough preaching for today. Uh, and the next day, I think we're moving on to maybe shoulders. Not sure. I think we are probably. Anyway, uh, until the next time, be safe and well and really take care of yourselves. <laughs>